Here we go. Jared, come play with us. Guys, I can't play with you. I have to get ready for I I am am a Deliverer. Hello, everyone. We made it. We're finally here in 2021, and it feels so good to join all of you for IMSH Delivers. Before we get down to business, let's take a moment to introduce ourselves. I'm Dr. Michael Spooner, cardiologist and simulationist at the Mason City Clinic in Mason City, Iowa. And I'm Denise Foy, operations manager at the Mayo Clinic Multidisciplinary Simulation Center in Rochester, Minnesota. And I'm Matthew Hackett. I'm a biomedical engineer with the Army Futures Command in Orlando, Florida. So now that you've met your planning team, what a year it has been as healthcare simulation professionals. I think we all recognize changes and uncertainty have really defined our last 12 months, both as individuals and as an industry. And the same has certainly been true for us as a planning team for this event. When we started this, we really kicked off right after we left San Diego with the expectation that we would be seeing you all live in New Orleans. And as we know, things have changed dramatically since then. As more information regarding COVID emerged and travel restrictions started to occur, we realized that we were in the situation of having to plan parallel events. One, assuming that we would be live in New Orleans and another with the potential of a virtual or a hybrid option. In other words, we had the opportunity to plan two major events at the same time, using two separate sets of resources and having totally unique needs. A truly unique opportunity for us, but thanks to the staff, things have turned out pretty well. It became clear as the months went on that a live IMSH was not going to be feasible or possible. Thankfully, the SSH Board of Directors quickly pivoted along with the staff to support us in shifting this event from live and in-person to fully virtual in the form of IMSH Delivers. With their guidance, we worked hand-in-hand -hand with the staff and our incredible volunteer community to figure out what virtual event offerings would serve all of the education and industry needs the best way possible and bring you the spectacular IMSH Delivers event that we are beginning today. We think you will see the fruits of endless discussions, planning sessions, and months of work over these next 10 weeks. And we're hopeful that while it may not bring exactly the same magic that an in-person IMSH delivers, we think you'll find a different magic in this virtual event with unique engagement and learning opportunities. After all, we are proud to deliver a very well-featured program with more than 150 pre-recorded sessions, up to 70 live sessions, and a whole host of additional learning opportunities from thought leaders in simulation and engagement opportunities with those professionals. Between now and the end of March, we know that the quality and quantity of these experiences will deliver on the IMSH that you would expect. We know that it only takes one key chat in a virtual room to spark an idea, or one session with a vendor at an online booth to forge some new capability in your center, or one aha moment to unlock a year's worth of momentum and progress for your team. We believe that IMSH delivers the perfect opportunity for those sensational magical moments to take place and help you find inspiration, encouragement, and new ways to bring learning to life. Which brings us to our theme, bringing learning to life. And to tell you more about that, I'll turn it over to another co-chair, Michael Spooner. On the theme, when we looked at a theme on how to bring the essence of what simulation brings to the field, we looked at several things. We asked ourselves, 
what are those unique things that simulation brings to our training throughout, uh, throughout the medical sphere? We asked ourselves, what is it that we see in a day-to-day -day basis that is unique about simulation? And what can we highlight that has not been highlighted previously by other meetings? What we arrived at was the idea that we felt that simulation many times allowed us to express the nuances of life, to see what the messiness of life was all about and how we could translate that to our patients, to our colleagues uh, through additional training, and also to our teams themselves as we work to put these, these uh, large or small simulations together. So what we hope to do is to translate how we could bring the messiness of life into our training. Now, several months after we started planning, we started realizing how messy life could become as we started now down the road, which has now been 10 months of this pandemic. We learned a lot in those 10 months, I would argue. We learned a lot about the virus that caused the pandemic, but we also learned about the resiliency of our own organizations, about our own people, and a lot about ourselves. But we, what we also learned is, is how to, to utilize the virtual communication means that we're seeing even in this meeting. We've learned things, terms like virtual handshakes, virtual hugs, and these have become some new realities to us that we never could have imagined even a short year ago. But in a sense, I would argue many of these lessons that we are learning were lessons that we as simulations had already, simulationists had already been trying to put together. We were trying to figure out how could we harness technology to communicate and educate without necessarily being controlled by the modalities that we were used to trans transmit the education and figuring out how to never lose that human connection that is so fundamental to our lives. And that's where we bring simulation, bringing learning to life. So we mentioned IMSH Delivers um, will offer more courses than any other simulation conference in the world. With hundreds of pre-recorded and live sessions, we understand how incredibly precious your time is, especially right now. And we want to support your education needs to the best of our ability, especially in terms of collaboration and information sharing. Therefore, it's our pleasure to announce one of the best parts of this year's event is that all of these sessions will be available to us for the rest of 2021 for all registered attendees. That's right, hundreds of high quality sessions dedicated to you the healthcare simulation administrator, educator, innovator, operations specialist, and researcher. All available on demand until the end of December. That includes all live sessions, which are being recorded and made available after they happen. And on Tuesdays, we'll feature the theme lecture series and Wednesdays will be dedicated to building your relationships with our healthcare simulation industry partners who will offer exclusive event access to services, products, and more information through the virtual learning labs. You'll have the opportunity to meet one-on-one -on -one with company representatives, and we strongly encourage you to make plans to do so in the virtual expo. Check the schedule on imsh2021.org for details on time so you can build that, get that built into your schedule now. Now that we've covered all those items, it's time, it's your turn to dive in. Bring your own learning to life in the pre-recorded sessions or head to your first live event. Please make sure to visit our truly wonderful exhibitors in the virtual exhibit hall. It's been an honor in ways we never would have imagined to serve as IMSH committee co-chairs. Thank you for attending. And again, we are excited you have given us the opportunity to bring simulation to life with you through IMSH Delivers and beyond. All of this is possible through the support from our partners, including our valued friends at Education Management Solutions. And we're honored to introduce this morning, EMS CEO, Anurag Singh. 
Education Management Solutions is honored to have the opportunity to support SSH and the healthcare simulation industry through our support of IMSH Delivers and Beyond. I'm Anurag Singh, President of EMS. I would like to warmly welcome you to IMSH 2021. This year, the COVID-19 pandemic caused many unexpected challenges. It disrupted a whole simulation community. Together, we rapidly worked to reimagine how healthcare simulation training can be delivered anytime, anywhere. We maximized the tools we had available at our disposal. As one pioneering community, we focused on one critical mission, maintaining the best-in-class education standards for tomorrow's healthcare professionals. We met the challenge, modifying our workflows and developing new training solutions for virtual environments. At EMS, we are committed to making a difference. For over 25 years, we have worked with our customers and industry experts to develop leading edge simulation training solutions. Early in the pandemic, we quickly shifted our product roadmap to meet the urgent need for virtual simulation workflows. Within two weeks of the mandatory stay at home orders, we launched revolutionary solutions to provide secure, remote standardized patient and mannequin-based simulation training. We're eager to expand the adoption of virtual simulation and online healthcare education with a number of new projects in 2021. As longtime partners of SSH, EMS is pleased to support our community through the Society's COVID-19 initiatives and the Corporate Roundtable. In 2021 and beyond, we move forward as a like-minded group of innovators and educators. We understand the need to keep reimagining simulation in a way that brings learning to life. As the first virtual IMSH kicks off, we can all recognize that innovation and adaptability are pillars of our community. The EMS team will miss seeing you in person this year, but we look forward to engaging with you virtually throughout the conference. Here's to an exciting and successful 2021. With that, thank you again, and it is now my pleasure to welcome SSH President Bob Armstrong. Thank you, Anna Rod. We truly appreciate EMS and all that you provide for both the industry and SSH through your involvement as a key sponsor of events like IMSH, this one, uh, as well as your ongoing participation on the SSH Corporate Roundtable. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Armstrong, the 2020 president of the society. And uh, I've got uh, about 15 minutes worth of uh, information I'd like to share with you just to give you a, uh, my perspective on the year of 2020, just a bit of a recap. Uh, in doing so, I'm going to share some slides with you. And let me see if I can get that going here real quick. All right, here we are. And we've uh, maximized screen this a little bit better, huh? All right, so again, Bob Armstrong here. Let's talk about 2020 and how it went. Uh, like any of you want to relive the last 12 months, but uh, we'll, we'll make it fast and furious. So first off, uh, the COVID year, 2020, it felt like a bit of a dumpster fire. Uh, I think I even referred to it that way in a couple of uh, communiques that I shared uh, as president. And, uh, you know, there were a, a few ups and downs, but lots of downs for all the way 2020. But let's think about this. Was it really that bad for the society? I posit, no, it was not. Actually, for the Society for Simulation and Healthcare, we were really lifted up. The quality of our year was truly lifted up by our members and staff. And I've got to tell you, I've got to hand it to you. Uh, you did a great job in 2020 to really rise to the occasion, which is kind of what we expect uh, healthcare providers uh, to do and educators to do. But at the same time, it doesn't always happen. So congratulations to you and for lifting yourself and the society up uh, and for, for having what I think was really an actually 
successful quality year in the Society for Simulation and Healthcare. Let's look a little bit closer at some of those things. So you might remember back in uh, IMSH 2020, uh, back in January, uh, when I spoke to you for a few minutes on stage that uh, my strategic priorities for 2020 included vision, growth, and collaboration, all really focused around some strategic planning efforts that uh, I was going to lead the society through. Well, less than a month after we get home from uh, IMSH in San Diego, we've got COVID, and immediately uh, my priorities shifted to making sure that we kept as many of the wheels on the car that is SSH as is humanly possible. Uh, that ended up not being as hard a task again because of this wonderful quality effort that all of you put, put forth. At the same time though, we didn't understand nor did, could we truly appreciate the real impacts of COVID on our society. And I gotta tell you, we've been very fortunate. Uh, your society remains healthy. Uh, we are still at over 4,300 members. Again, our, our membership continues to grow. and We never drop significantly over the year. So we had people still becoming members during, uh, during times of COVID. We uh, added 422 new cheesy accreditations and 121 cheese sauce accreditations, excuse me, certifications on both of those. Uh, we had 42 accredited programs that we added to the, um, uh, to the quiver of accredited programs, uh, seven provisional, 35 full. And we really adjusted the way that we performed the site visits uh, by, by running everything remotely. So we weren't traveling anyone anywhere uh, to do the site visits. We did everything over Zoom or some similar platform. 450 Zoom virtual review hours were provided. And uh, even with all the external pressures that the COVID virus put on everybody's program, we still had 22 new applications come in uh, during 2020. So uh, that's a successful uh, accounting right there. And we ought to be proud of that. Again, this is because of the the, the, the real strength of our members uh, and our staff that have, that have really come forward and, and lifted 2020 for us this year. So a few of the highlights of 2020 that I'd like to bring up, uh, and I'm gonna hit on these real fast. There was the uh, collaborative SSH and Axle and ASPE statement on uh, the value and the uh, support for the use of modeling and simulation as a key enabler to uh, meet things that are challenging to do in non-COVID times, but certainly help strengthen our uh, academic curriculums and our caregiving capability during uh, COVID-19. So real uh, uh, excited about the ability to come together in that collaborative effort. Another collaborative effort was between the Society and Axel, where we uh, published a position statement. Uh, and I'll quote the main piece to this, it's really critical. Based on the current and anticipated shortage of healthcare workers, we propose that regulatory bodies and policymakers demonstrate flexibility by allowing the replacement of clinical hours, usually completed in a healthcare setting, with that of virtually simulated experiences during the pandemic. Uh, I'm proud to say, uh, uh, very proud of KT Waxman who was able to help uh, create this exact thing happen in the state of California uh, uh, through uh, governor's executive order. Speak to that in a little bit. Uh, we put up a very, very successful COVID-19 helpful resources page as did our sister uh, societies. Uh, we linked to all sorts of content. We had all sorts of free as uh, content that was available on this website. To date, it's been accessed more than 53,000 times. This is a great number. Uh, I still direct people to this website when they wanna know more about uh, various things that they uh, uh, can uh, gain access to with regards to COVID. And um, we ought to really be proud of that. And this was all your efforts that came together to create this, uh, this wonderful resource. The uh, Sim Connect community that was established for COVID-19 became a really valuable resource for anyone with an SSH account. Uh, this was really a great focal point for discussion and sharing. Uh, and I, I, I subscribed to this group as I think everybody on, that had an SSH account did. But I can tell you there was a lot of really good uh, information shared here. Uh, it was very open, very fair, very even uh, community. And I was just really happy to see that. Uh, and you all ought to be proud of that. Are you, you're, and don't be done being proud yet because we had a wonderful healthcare simulation week uh, in September. Uh, as you can see from the map here, we had a lot of involvement 
uh, across the globe, uh, really dedicated involvement throughout various simulation centers and uh, caregiver entities uh, across the globe. And we ought to be proud of that because September was the week, certainly in the United States, where uh, we're, we were typically in our first or second month of a new academic year, and we were executing in ways we'd never executed before. So it was uh, it, it really satisfying to see so many people critically engaged in healthcare simulation week across the globe. Again, speaks to the great uh, uh, value of our members uh, coming together and understanding the importance of sharing and collaborating. The Women in Leadership Symposium occurred. Uh, we had 135 virtual attendees at this one day conference. Again, another very successful collaboration between ASPE and Actual and the Society of Simulation and Healthcare. ASPE was the 2020 lead. Uh, they did a really good job with this. Again, 135 attendees is a, a, a good number. Uh, we weren't, none of us had Zoom fatigue at that point, uh, which is good. I think it's a really valuable uh, uh, event to attend anyway. So I'm, I'm glad that it was successful as it was. Uh, the virtual SimOps, uh, the SimOps Delivers was our theme. Uh, we had 140 virtual attendees uh, to this conference. It's a little bit less than what we've had uh, during periods of, of live SimOps, but it was valuable to us in that uh, it allowed us to kind of test drive what we thought we might do for the virtual IMSH, which is of course what I'm speaking at the beginning of right now. As of the middle of December, we've got almost 740 registered attendees. I'm sure that number is significantly higher than that now. Uh, we had a lot of members and non-members. We've had group registrations, which was a new package deal that we put together uh, that allowed us to uh, essentially uh, attract more attendees from organizations where they might not have been able to uh, have flown their folks or traveled their people to an IMSH but they gave them the opportunity through group registration to attend. Uh, this has been very, very successful. Uh, as of again, mid-December, we're averaging about 150 registrations a week. I expect that we are on pace for over uh, 1,500 registra registrants attending uh, this conference. And again, all of our content is gonna be available, recorded. It's gonna be available on the web all throughout 2021. So it's just gonna be the event that keeps on giving. Uh, which is again, something also very important that we're able to tackle this and it's a, a, a good benefit of COVID is that we've wanted to always uh, present our content and make it available after the event uh, for, for as long as we wanted to, but it, it's just not been an easy thing to logistically make happen. Uh, necessity being the mother of invention that's gonna happen this year. And I feel very strongly that it's probably gonna happen for years to come. I want to take a brief moment to thank the SS8 staff. Uh, these folks are some tireless, dedicated, hardworking people who really make things happen behind the scenes. And even though it's their day job and their night job uh, to support you, they still uh, are, do a tremendous job that we need to recognize, and uh, especially this year. It's been a hard year for us. It's been a hard year for them. But uh, every one of them have risen to the occasion to create what I think has been, again, this very, very successful year for our society. I'd like to honor three individuals with presidential citations. Uh, Sean Callahan and Melissa Louder, who are the leadership of the SOTS section, um, have been very instrumental in re-energizing the SOTS section. Uh, and also for helping to uh, establish and select the editors uh, and the, the, especially the editor in chief role uh, for Storm Magazine, the Simulation Technician Operations Resource Magazine. Uh, this has been an effort that's taken uh, a lot of energy and uh, they've certainly been up to the task. And uh, I believe they are most deserving of the 2020 president, of a 2020 presidential citation. Uh, I'd like to also honor KT Waxman for her tremendous uh, service to the society over the years, uh, certainly for her leadership as the 2019 uh, president of the society, uh, but most importantly for the dedicated efforts that she put forth uh, to help the governor of Virginia establish executive order uh, N-39-20, which in essence waived restrictions on nursing student clinical hours 
uh, and therefore pave the way for replacing more of those student clinical training hours with simulated clinical experiences. This is uh, a trend that seems to be uh, taking uh, place across the country. However, it's always great when California starts to do something like this because so many great, wonderful trends start in California and that uh, travel east. So we really appreciate uh, all the energy that KQ Axman put forth to help Governor Newsom uh, put this executive order in place. So uh, congratulations to these three most deserving individuals. So in closing, uh, thank you very much, members, staff, board, for a uh, tremendous 2020. It was a whole lot more successful than I think any of us thought it might be, uh, might have been when we were looking at things in March. It's been a great, great year, high quality year, something we uh, ought to be proud of pulling off. And I'll tell you what, you know, 2020, uh, the leadership that led us into 2020 uh, really came from Katie Waxman in her role as immediate past president at that time president. And uh, I got to tell you, she's, uh, she's really been something else. And I wanted to give her uh, an opportunity to address you all and to share some things with you, uh, basically her thoughts. So now, KT, take it away. Thank you for your kind words, Bob. Thank you for your leadership this past year in a year like no other. Hi, everyone. I last saw all of you at IMSH 2020 in January in San Diego. That was a great time. At IMSH, I shared with you that I traveled a lot in 2019 as your president, while I represented the society at conferences and meetings all over the world. This year, travel has been shut down completely, although we still connect with our simulation colleagues in a different way. Who would have known that in less than two months after our meeting in San Diego, that we would be at, at stay at home orders due to a global pandemic? I haven't left my house since, IMSH. The society quickly pivoted to bring our simulation community many free webinars to pro provide our members with the skills they need to manage simulations remotely. We set up a COVID resource center, wrote position papers with our partners, and this was all under the leadership of our current president, president, Bob Armstrong. He's been strong and adaptable. He's been visible. He has facilitated many, many meetings. He has networked and yet he hasn't traveled one bit. As visible as he is, you wouldn't know it. As we move into our next or new normal, I think about all of you and what you have contributed to the simulation community helping others learn how to teach differently, how to run Sims remotely. Your advocacy over the years has been remarkable and has paid off. Simulation is now a standard of practice and well-established. So when COVID hit, we were well-prepared to move forward without losing any time, without missing a beat. In terms of nursing, I was very impressed that some states allowed schools of nursing to do whatever they could to get students through the semester, embracing simulation to replace clinical placements, yet other states were not as flexible. Most states obtained waivers from their boards of nursing to increase the use of simulation to meet the needs of their students and patients. Some states actually had to get legislators to write bills and override their boards of nursing. My hope is that we don't go back to the way we were. That as a community, we continue to advocate for simulation, use the outcome data from the teaching during the pandemic and turn it around to show regulatory bodies that simulation is as effective as the clinical experience. The society's use of, of social media during this time has been very effective in bringing the simulation community globally together during this unprecedented time. We truly are a connected global community. These are crazy disruptive times and we have certainly leveraged simulation in this crisis. Having been a disruptor in education for many years, we have now made our mark. In closing, I would like to remember our dear friend and colleague, Chad Epps. I had the privilege of serving with him as co-chair on the nominations committee this year. Chad was a wonderful simulation leader, 
mentor, colleague, and friend. He will truly be missed. May his memory be a blessing. Thank you for all you do for our communities and our patients and our students and all the differences you're making in simulation. Thank you. Thank you, KT. I know we'll see more of you over the coming year, virtually for now, of course, but hopefully in person very soon. At this time, I wanna introduce your president for 2021-2022, Julie Maxworthy. I've had the distinct pleasure of working closely with Julie on the board over this past year. Uh, she's gonna make a great president, y'all. We're really in for a treat. Uh, as is our tradition, I asked her to share her vision for the next year. So without further ado, Julie, take it away. Thanks, Bob, for those lovely words. I'm very excited about the opportunity to serve this society in this capacity for the upcoming year. A little bit about my background is, let's see, where do I start? I've been a nurse for a very long time. I'm a mother of four and a grandmother of one. I have multiple hobbies, which include bike riding, swimming, knitting. I read, I'm a voracious reader. I'm an academic. Um, I'm a big hiker. So there's many things I like to do outside of healthcare simulation. But how I got into healthcare simulation is an interesting story. So I was a Boy Scout before I was a Girl Scout. A little bit about me, I um, did search and rescue. And this was during the time when 911 was coming into being, at least as far as California was concerned. I volunteered and had the opportunity to be melage multiple times with multiple types of injuries and place in an industrial park to be triaged and then airlifted to a local hospital or just one time I had a test and so they just made me a DOA. So I got to study, but I had, um, I still participated so they could do the, like I said, they could practice their triage techniques. Uh, back in the day, we didn't need a parental consent. They were just glad to get rid of us on a Saturday. So fast forward a few years, quite a few years to graduate school where I had the opportunity to go to graduate school with Dr. KT Waxman. And uh, she exposed me to uh, SSH from an accreditation perspective, because at the time I was VP of quality and risk for a healthcare organization and was um, quite intrigued with the work that she was doing as far as her, um, her graduate program um, work related to developing the California Simulation Alliance. So I got myself involved and before I knew it, I was the chair of accreditation and I've been part of that group for over a decade now. And it's been a wonderful experience for me. And if anybody has an interest to become a reviewer, I highly recommend it because it gives you incredible insight into another program. And there's so much learning that can occur for yourself and taking it back to your program. So then I also, uh, that after my time um, as accreditation chair, I took on the role as secretary for the society. And here I am today as president elect. Um, I stand on the shoulders of those who came before me. This organization is strong, solid, and destined to and continue to grow over the years to come. And I'm so honored to be part of this um, time in history where we have great opportunities as far as simulation is to make such a difference. And I think for many of you, this is the first time that your program has really been acknowledge for the benefits that it provides to your organization. I have published several um, articles, book chapters and the like over the years. I have the privilege, I have had the privilege of being one of the editors for the Defining Excellence and Simulation programs, um, DESP as we like to call it. And we are in the throes of completing the revisions for this second edition. So keep your eyes out. The plan is to have it ready and launched by IMSH 2022. My vision during this next year is for our members to stay safe, first and foremost. Um, I also want us to stay connected and figure out other ways for us to be connected. Um, I look to the members to provide us ideas, things that are working in your particular environment that perhaps SSH can adopt. Uh, my email is sshpresident2021 at gmail.com. So feel free to reach out and provide me some ideas. I would love it. 
But in light of that, we're also gonna be planning for quarterly town hall meetings starting in March after the board meeting so that we can provide the community the latest of what's happening related to SSH, the simulation community at large, and to also have uh, opportunities for conversation. What I have found over the last nine months is that there are many of us trying to uh, figure out ways by which we can continue to build our communities of practice. And I, like I said, I'm looking to this group to help us um, be the number one organization for healthcare simulation and also the number one membership organization in the field because it's, it's our organization and we want it to be the best it possibly can be. The other piece to my year is, I'm um, sure many of you know of the passing of Chad Epps, a dear friend of mine and a colleague to many. His loss has rocked the organization. Um, it just makes you realize how every day is a gift. Uh, he was a huge supporter of healthcare simulation, saw the benefit of it for our patients. And his lovely wife, Deborah, asked what um, we, she could do to help an organization that Chad truly enjoyed. So that's how, if you see the front page of uh, the SSH website, you will see an opportunity to give to the Chad Epps Scholarship Fund. We are in the process of determining how best to utilize these funds. It's going to be a board task force at this time to determine the best way to continue Chad's legacy. We, are we were an incredibly fortunate organization to have and many other organizations because Chad was very involved with multitudes of organizations that had anything to do with healthcare simulation. And for me, Chad exemplifies the word of the, the, the term philanthropy, which means love of mankind. So we are working hard to figure out how best to honor his legacy. And again, if you have ideas, please let me know. And so I'll finish with, it's been a tough 2020. 2021 is looking much more positive in the fact that we've got vaccines and those are being rolled out. Um, some countries are doing better jobs than others, but we're all working hard to ensure that we will be in a place to have us all get together in January of 2022 in Los Angeles. Please stay safe and tell those that you care about that they're important to you. Thank you so much for your time and back to you, Bob. All right, everybody. So now's the time in our uh, IMSH presentation where we typically do the passing of the gavel. Since we're all physically distanced, we all don't actually have a gavel, but I was thinking that this really typifies the type of year we've had in 2020. So sledgehammer, gavel, whatever you think. You know, I, I think it happens to be appropriate. So the traditional passing of the gavel, sending this to my good friend, uh, Julie Maxworthy. Julie, I, I wish you the best of luck this year. I got your back 100%. Whatever I can do to help you out and make us more successful, you just ask and I'll be there. I gotta get this all the way to California, so I'm throwing this with the strength of Uncle Rico, if you've seen Napoleon Dynamite. Here we go, all right? Passing it away. Thanks, Bob. My hope is that 2021 is the best year ever for the society. 2020 has been a tough one. I'm looking forward to a new year and looking forward to working with everybody to make the society the best one ever. Take care.